Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here, and it's time to do my full review on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, a phone I've been using since it came out, so almost three months at this point. Now I wanna treat this as a longer term review, talk about my experiences with the phone, the camera, maybe touch on that overheating, obviously the new action button and USB type C slot. Also, talk about the titanium build, and even Apple commented on adding RCS support, which is the upgrade to SMS and MMS coming soon to iPhones. So we'll touch on the future of iPhones as well in this video. But anyways, let's get started. First things first, the design. Nothing crazy different, still has that dynamic island on the screen, but they did use a titanium in their device. And I have to say, the addition of titanium, strength aside, the weight of it is a huge change. The 14 Pro Max was kind of heavy and it's a noticeable difference when you hold it in your hands. It's noticeably lighter, but also not only that, they've designed it better. It's a little more rounded on the sides and it's a little bit smoother, so it's much more comfortable. No, again, noticeably more comfortable in the hand to hold. Honestly, maybe the most comfortable iPhone I've held. Um, now, if you have a case, that might not really matter that much. Also, aside from the less sharp edges of the 14, you'll notice it collects a lot less fingerprints, or at least they're not noticeable on the side. The glossy sides on the 14 had very obvious fingerprints. This titanium does not show them. The big difference this year in the build is the addition of USB Type-C, which was more of an EU law that forced Apple's hand into adding it and getting rid of that lightning connection. And I know a lot of people are upset about it because they have so many accessories with that lightning connection, but I know a lot of people that also use MagSafe wireless charging and even USB Type-C on their laptops or if they have an Android phone or tablet. So for me, it obviously was an easy transition. I have so many USB Type-C cables, but I can definitely see the pain point in the people that don't. And this kind of reminds me of back when Apple got rid of the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and people still wanted to listen with their headphones that connected to it, so they needed an adapter. So this feels a little bit similar. And over a couple of years, the transition should be pretty seamless overall. Now I will say adding USB Type-C does help with data transfer speeds. However, they didn't touch charging speeds. So I do wish the charging speeds while wired were faster, especially because the USB-C can definitely support it. And speaking of battery life, specifically on the Max, the Max is better than the regular Pro. It gets me through the day and then some on fairly heavy use. Even if I'm just on mobile data and not on Wi-Fi, battery life is solid, but it isn't as good as I'd like it to be. Actually, the 13 Pro Max, I feel like was better. And then the 14 Pro Max got a little worse. This is just about the exact same as the 14 Pro Max. And of course, you'll need some accessories with your phone. And that brings us to our sponsor. So big thanks to ESR for sponsoring this video and sending these products over. Now, ESR has a huge lineup of mobile accessories, but specifically, we're gonna take a look at their MagSafe accessories. There will be a link to all of these down in the description below. The first one we're gonna take a look at, I use all the time. This is the ESR MagSafe 100 watt six in one charger. This will provide fast charging for all of your Apple devices, including your iPhone, but also the Apple Watch, maybe your AirPods, also with 100 watts of GAN powered fast charging. You can even charge your iPad and MacBook. When wirelessly charging your phone, it does have cryo boost, which will help keep your phone cooler so it can charge at that fast speed. This is the charger I currently have on my nightstand next to my bed. I can charge all of my devices at the end of the day. And also a great option to have on your desk, especially if you're working on a MacBook or your laptop. So you can charge that along with your other devices. And it's nice that it will just hold it and you can face it towards you so you can use your device while it's charging. Next, we're gonna look at the ESR MagSafe hybrid case with stash stand. And this stand mechanism is really neat. A great way to protect your device, but also use MagSafe with a case on the phone. A nice looking case, and you can still see the color of the phone that you actually chose. Plus, that fold away stash stand is crazy. You can use it horizontally, or vertically as well. I love how it just sort of fits behind that camera module. And last but not least, ESR has a MagSafe ring, so if your device doesn't have MagSafe, you can actually add it. The installation is really easy. Maybe an older iPhone that doesn't have MagSafe or even an Android phone. If you'd like to start taking advantage of MagSafe accessories, ESR has you covered. Again, all links down in the description below, or you can search ESR MagSafe on Amazon. Apple has made a big change this year and done away with the mute switch. So it's not a switch anymore. It's called an action button. Now by default, it's a press and hold. And by default, it is the actual mute switch. However, within settings, there are a lot of 
different options that you have. So you can have that silent mode, but you can have it do things like open up apps like camera, flashlight, uh, have it run a voice memo and custom ones. So I wanted it to be a little more useful. I wanted it to have maybe a triple tap or just ways to truly customize it. Uh, it's somewhat limited, but figured out a way that let's say for example, I'm holding it horizontally and I press and hold that button, it goes straight into the video part of the camera. So I can switch to photo if I wanna take a photo real quick, but I like having it to video so I don't miss a specific shot. Now, watch what happens when I hold it in portrait mode. So if I press and hold it while it's in portrait mode, it's going to identify the song because I miss now playing so much on my Pixel, I have a quick shortcut to activate what song is playing on the radio, anything like that. Now you can customize those, but that wasn't by default. I had to install the actions application from the App Store. So if you have an iPhone 15 and you wanna really customize it, go into the actions application. You can do things like have them be portrait orientation uh, activated. When the 15 Pro first came out, there were a lot of reports of overheating and Apple has pushed out a software update to solve that. Now, in my case, I didn't really get any super overheating. It would get hot if I was charging it and doing some heavy gaming and multitasking at the same time, but most phones do get hot when you do that. Um, it was maybe a little bit hotter than it should be, and then after the update, it seemed to not be an issue. It still does get warm, don't get me wrong, but again, most phones do while you're charging it and doing some heavy gaming, so they seem to have resolved that with the software update over time. When it comes to that 6.7 inch OLED display, it's excellent, the colors look really good. It's not a crazy upgrade from the 14 Pro, but it still looks really good. So Apple continues to include great panels with a high refresh rate so everything looks really smooth. Lately, iMessage has been getting a lot of buzz specifically because someone figured out how to reverse engineer iMessage and wrap it up into an application, install it on an Android phone, and you could use iMessage with people that have iPhones on your Android device. And you know, if you think about it, if they took maybe, let's say WhatsApp, Telegram, Facebook Messenger, any of those other chat apps and reverse engineered it and put it into a separate app, and not only that, they charge $2 a month for it, those companies aren't gonna be happy. So Apple obviously was like, hey, that's not okay figured out a way to kind of get their servers shut down and, and, and make it so it's really not working. So obviously reverse engineering something and wrapping it up into a package that you sell probably isn't going to work. I was really surprised at how much media coverage it got simply because you saw it and you're like, okay, that's not gonna last. Apple's not going to be okay with someone charging someone for their services that they created. Anyways, I do appreciate what the app Beeper is doing because it's sort of putting pressure. It's bringing the topic up. It's making it say, hey, this is obviously something that's a pain point between different users of cell phones. So who knows, maybe Apple will open up iMessage to everyone in the future, charge Android users for iMessage, who knows? But with that being said, Apple actually made an official statement saying that later next year, they say later next year, so I assume it's going to be third, fourth quarter of next year of 2024, they are adding RCS support, which like I said in the beginning of the video is the upgrade from SMS and MMS. So texting and sending videos and pictures aren't going to look terrible between Android phones. They already don't because RCS is supported on Android. But now when you send a picture and a video to an iPhone user, it's going to be sent via RCS which will make the quality much better. Not only that, you get other added features like adding, removing people from groups, red receipts, typing indicators, uh, emoji reactions, and just a lot more. So RCS is a definite upgrade to your phone's experience. It will be interesting to see how they integrate it with iMessage. If it's going to be like, hey, your group chat is iMessage and RCS, you can add and remove people, or if it's iMessage only, it's still going to cause problems if you add someone on RCS. I don't quite know how it's going to be, but I can almost guarantee you the color of the bubbles will be different if you're using RCS or iMessage. Now onto the big one, Apple did make some changes with the camera system. They added a 5X zoom telephoto lens to the Pro Max. So the Pro only has up to 3X telephoto. So if you do need that little extra zoom, 
you will need to get the Max. Now this camera system competes as one of the best complete packages in a phone. That 5X really jumped it up because the zoom on the previous iPhones were lacking. I was even saying, hey, if they don't add another telephoto lens, they're really falling behind because Samsung and specifically Google, they really do a good job with their 10X zoom ranges. Now it really depends on how you use the camera. If let's say you're all golfing and you see a deer in the trees, you wanna take a picture of it, the 5X comes in handy. It's really cool and fun to use with portraits and then obviously just getting closer to subjects. It does look good. They're quality pictures that you get in lower light. They can get maybe a little bit grainy, but overall they still shoot um, better quality obviously than you normally would get. Now, when it comes to the wide angle and ultra wide angle, I didn't notice any crazy improvements from the 14 Pro, honestly. So pretty similar experience overall in good lighting. Camera or photos are excellent. The dynamic range is really good, especially when you have lower lights and, and brighter lights in one shot. One thing I love is the automatic portrait mode. So when you take a picture, you don't have to take two. It will take a portrait mode shot or a regular shot, and you can switch between the two post taking your picture. So as a quick example, here's a quick picture that I took, but you can go from portrait to portrait off, and you'll notice you can see a lot more in the background, or you can turn it back on. This obviously works a lot better with people, so here's just a picture of me that has some depth behind it. You can go from portrait to portrait off, and again, portrait off just makes it seem like a regular picture, and you can go back and forth between them if you'd like to blur the background. And the portrait mode does a really good job with edges and just making sure the foreground is cut out appropriately. And Apple continues to be the king of video on their devices. It's still my go-to when I film reels and other videos. It's a quick shortcut that I have. And those zoom lenses just add even more versatility to your video experience. Here I am just zooming in on some surfers. Uh, the video quality looks really good, especially in that lighter, brighter situation. In darker light, when you start to zoom in, it gets a little grainy, but that's just like every other phone. Quickly want to touch on the dynamic island. It's gotten some more and more app support. I noticed like the United app started adding support, but I still find it really useful. It's more useful than a notch, obviously, when it shows maybe a quick timer up in the top, or if I want to swap songs, or if I'm on a call, want a quick mute or end or add it on speakerphone. So there's a lot of useful uh, quick shortcuts when I'm in an app that I can take advantage of. Now, I don't want to dive too much into iOS because that is the software that's on just about every iPhone, but I will say their notification management just needs an upgrade. That is the one thing that really sort of bothers me is just how cluttered the notification bar kind of gets sometimes. Um, when I go over to an Android device, it just looks significantly better and I don't miss as many notifications. That's just something I really notice when I go from an iPhone to an Android device. Apple's new A17 chip inside is crazy quick. It's, it's really powerful. Apple continues to lead the pack in their processor chip development. And it's fun to see. It's fun to see the competition that's coming out. You've got Apple, Qualcomm, and MediaTek all competing for that best chip. Uh, modems are also really challenging to make. So uh, I believe Apple's partnering with Qualcomm for a few more years for their 5G modem. So it'll be fun to see how that landscape plays out. But Apple's still top tier with, with their chipsets. It's fun to see where gaming is going. I do believe you're gonna see more and more high-end games on your mobile phones going forward. Anyways, that's it for my review on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Drop a comment, let me know what you think. If you have any questions about these devices, I have really enjoyed my experience. Apple has really made a premium product. Yeah, there's a couple drawbacks. There's things that I'm not going to like, just like on Android devices, there's things I don't like about those. So it's, it's fun to see the development over time. I'm really excited to see the implementation of RCS upgrading SMS into iMessage. So we'll see how Apple handles that going forward. Anyways, I can definitely recommend the 15 Pro Max. However, if you're on a 14 Pro Max and even a 13 Pro Max, you might wanna hold off till next year. I don't know if it's quite the jump you'd want to see, but it still is a premium product. If you don't use it with a case, it's, it's so comfortable to hold without it and it's really light. Anyways, be sure to subscribe. A lot more videos coming soon. Be sure to click that thumbs up button. And as always, thanks for watching.